and you are tuned in to Educate. Welcome, my name is Pilani Gabriel Mahapira. Today we are going to be talking about the fourth uh, classification under the microbes or the microorganisms. Remember, I already covered the viruses, the protists, and the bacteria. Now we go now to the fungi. So the kingdom fungi indicates, uh, includes, I mean, includes mold, yeasts, mildews, rusts, toadstools, and mushrooms. So mushrooms are fungus. So this can tell us more about mushrooms that actually you can see them with our naked eyes. So the kingdom fungi has got many divisions. Some of it is uh, the microscopic, which cannot be seen by the naked eye. Some of them are the macroscopic. So let's look at the key terminology you need to know. So we've got chitin. So chitin is a fibrous substance consisting of polysaccharides, which is the major constituent and exoskeleton of anthropods and the world of fungi. So chitin is found in the walls of fungi, which is made up of what? Which is made up of polysaccharides. By fibrous here, it means that it looks like fiber, it looks like fiber actually so that fiber stands for fiber so hyphae hyphae is a network of multi-celled thread-like filaments forming the mycelium of a fungus so this is all part of a fungus and then mycelium is a vegetative mass or network of fungal hyphae found in and on soil or organic substrates so we're just going to see exactly what these meanings mean because this can actually seem confusing if you haven't seen the structure of the fungus so here i've got multinucleate which are the cells that have more than one nucleus per cell so it means that it's got multinuclei shared in one common cytoplasm remember that a cell has to contain a, uh, a nucleus therefore if the nucleus uh, is now more than one, it becomes multinucleate. So we've got the rhizoids, which are thread-like structures that anchor lower plants and fungi to a surface. Just like you can see here, the mushrooms here. Mushrooms do not really have roots. Here are mushrooms. You can see that here, if you are going to take away, uh, if you are just going to um, you know just remove those ma mushrooms from the soil you just notice that they are not really anchored by roots they don't have any what any roots so the absence of roots it indicates that they are anchored by something else called what a rhizoid so those are called rhizoid and they are not what they are not roots so rhizoid anchor the mushrooms to the ground remember that something that anchors uh, so there's something that anchors something to a substrate. In this case, it's a rhizoid. So it's anchoring the mushrooms to the ground or to the surface of the earth. So we've got budding, which is a form of sexual uh, asexual reproduction, which involves the pinching off of offspring from the parent cell. The offspring cell is genetically identical to the parent. So yeah, this is, this is, these are the basics. These are the basics of the fungus. So let's continue. You can see that these are toadstools, these are mushrooms. You can see that these are bracket fungi. You can see that that's a bread mold. Okay. You see, well, most of the times when your bread is now rotten, you just call it rotten, is because it now contains what? A mold. So that's what. Does, uh, those are just examples of fungi. You can see this mostly it's found in in you know in caves in caves and in rocky areas so yes that's the basic so let's look at the characteristics of the fungi so uh the fungi have got the following characteristics uh which is in common so some are unicellular which are yeasts for example while others are multicellular uh, like mushrooms so multicellular just means that they contain more than one cell these contain less than uh, they just contain only one cell it's only one that one is more than one so that's the meaning of unicellular and multicellular in an organism so uh, the they're, they're eukaryotic, they've got a nuclear membrane, so it means they're eukaryotic. 
Remember that uh, if a nucleus has got a membrane, it means it's, it's eukaryotic. If it is not membrane bound or it doesn't have a membrane, it means that it is prokaryotic. And then others are heterotrophic since they lay chlorophyll. Actually, they are all heterotrophic. They lay chlorophyll, so it means they cannot photosynthesize, neither can they chemosynthesize. So they are heterotrophic. They have to depend on what? On either parasit uh, being par parasitic, being saprophytic, or being mutualistic. So fungi that live off dead organic matter are said to be saprophytic. Trophic. So this is saprotrophic or saprophytic. So parasitic fungi live off living organism. So they actually uh, depend on living organism. They can actually obtain food from living organisms while harming those organisms. So fungi causes diseases such as thrush, ringworm, and athletes food. So these are the examples of diseases caused by fungi. So this, uh, let's just continue the characteristic so here it's continuous says that cell walls which contain cheating so remember that we define cheating as the structure found uh, surrounding the fungi as a protective layer so cheating uh, is found in the cell walls so the cell walls of a fungi contains cheating and then plants have cellulose in their cell walls so uh, the the plant have got cellulose and the cell walls have got what? Right? They've got the cheating. Okay. So the bodies of multicellular fungi are made up of threads called hyphae. So the bodies of what? Multicellular fungi. So it means this fungi would have what? Many cells. And they are made up of what? Of threads called hyphae. We already looked at them, which make up the mycelium. So all the hyphae together form a mycelium. So the combination of hyphae is forming the structure called a mycelium. And then the hyphae are often multinucleate. Remember that multinucleate means that is the characteristic of containing uh, more than one nucleus in the same cytoplasm. So fungi reproduce both sexually and asexually. So others they go through sexual processes, others they do not go through sexual processes. So asexual reproduction in unicellular fungi such as yeast is called budding. Remember we talked about the budding, which is the reproductive, uh, this is the what, the asexual reproduction of what? Of unicellular fungi. So this can only happen in unicellular fungi, not the multicellular one. So once it's multicellular, it has to go through sexual reproduction. And in multicellular fungi, sexual reproduction is by means of spores. So they actually contain this thing called spores, uh, which are used for what? For sexual reproduction. Um, we are going to look at the structure of the fungi in the next video. Thank you for watching.